What we're showing you on our screens is Finance Minister P. Chidambaram getting ready to address uh, the media at the AICC meet. Uh, we understand he will be detailing the list of achievements uh, by the Finance Ministry made over the last uh, four to five years under the UPA2 government. Uh, we're waiting uh, for the Finance Minister to begin his speech. Uh, to remember, P. Chidambaram will not be contesting through the Lok Sabha route uh, this upcoming elections. It's still not clear whether he'll be seeking the Rajya Sabha route or not. Uh, but uh, recently he did did uh, uh, assure uh, market investors that all is well with the economy and that the recent big rally that the market has been seeing is because of the good economic work that the UP2 government has done. He attributed the success uh, of uh, the Lal Street's recent story to the achievements of the UPA and said it had nothing to do with uh, the hopes of a possible BJP-led uh, government uh, coming into power. So that's, of course, uh, the Finance Minister P. Chidambaram. We're awaiting uh, till he begins uh, speaking, but uh, let's just cut across and listen in once again. Can you please settle down, please? Please settle down. Good afternoon to all of you. Okay, you're most welcome to shut the door. Yeah, yeah. If they can come inside. Huh? Is it better now? Yeah, yeah. Good. Okay. Good afternoon. This was planned as a end of the year conference to report on the economy. But then we had to move the venue to the AICC because of the code of conduct. The year will end more or less as we planned. We will end the year with a fiscal deficit of 4.6% as planned. Our reserves today have crossed 300 billion US dollars. We expect to add about 25 billion dollars to the reserves by the end of today for the whole year. And the current account deficit, which is originally estimated at under 60 billion and then brought down progressively as we move forward, the current account deficit is now likely to be much smaller, perhaps about 35 billion dollars. So what we set out to do after my return to the Finance Ministry in August 2012 and what we set out to do at the beginning of this year has been substantially accomplished. The economy is more stable. No one talks about a downgrade anymore. The fundamentals have strengthened and if anyone has any doubt I can invite him to a number of articles. I can quote one. The editorial in the Economic Times on the 28th of March 2014. <coughs> I'm not doing an advertisement for that paper, but that's the last editorial. I've handed over a sheet of paper. And those of you who have it will kindly follow it and others you will get a copy. What has happened over the last 10 years is we must look at the period up to 2007-8 and the period thereafter. If political leaders, analysts do not recognize that what happened on September 15, 2008 was a watershed, I'm afraid they don't understand what's happening in the world. So one has to look at 
the performance of the UPA up to 2007-8 and then what kind of challenges the country faced and the government faced and how we tackled those challenges post September 2008. I have given in this sheet of paper data for some key years 1997-98 when the NDA government completed one year and there was a re-election then 1998-99 then 2002-2003 when NDA's first finance minister was to put it mildly moved out of North Block Then 2003-04, when the NDA term came to an end and the UPA's term began. 2007-08, the watershed year, the year after which the crisis hit the world. Then 2008-09, the last year of UPA 1, when we were in the middle of a full-blown crisis and then 2013-14, the year that comes to an end today. Those of you who have the sheet in front of you will notice that on every parameter, 2007-8 was the most outstanding year in India's history in terms of economic performance. That was the year when our reserves had crossed $300 billion, $309 billion. And today, I'm happy to report, it has crossed $300 billion once again. That was the year when the fiscal deficit was lowest at 2.5. The revenue deficit was lowest at 1.1. External debt to GDP was lowest at 18%. The external debt service ratio that year and the following year were among the lowest, 4.8 and 4.4 respectively. Savings to GDP ratio was the highest, 36.8. Investment to GDP ratio was the highest, 38.1. And GDP growth was the highest at 9.3%. On every parameter, 2007-8 was an outstanding year. And we could have continued that splendid run, but for the crisis that hit the world in September 2008. So post-September 2008, the picture is mixed. And I don't want to go into the details. I've said this in the budget speech. I've explained what happened the unconventional monetary policy that was adopted by all countries of the world, including India. Everybody has the benefit of hindsight, but when after the event? 